Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. I can walk back there. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We're just going to go ahead and get started since it's time and we've got a lot in our bulletin for today. I know people will be coming in a little late. Um, this is the day of Pentecost, and because of that, we found a bird flying inside the church, as is appropriate, I suppose. The Holy Spirit comes in the form of a dove, and there was a, a bird that we were able to liberate and take outside. Um, but it's also, and more importantly, it is a day when Inara is going to be liberated from, from sin and, and give, be given a wonderful place in God's family. So we are looking forward to the baptism of Inara. Along those lines, I know that um, there are several guests here for the baptism. If you need to use a restroom, if you go out the side aisle and then turn left, there's a giant room that has sort of a fellowship hall kind of area. And the bathroom, there's a sign for that in the corner, in the left corner when you are in that room. So please make yourself at home. Um, when we come to the time for communion, anybody is welcome to come up and receive. We don't limit to Lutherans or members, so um, you're welcome to be part of that. In person and online, the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Father, Mother, God, you claim us as your children and let us inherit the blessings of faith. Thank you for reaching out to us beyond time and place, language and custom, to call us into unity in the Spirit. We humbly ask forgiveness when we do not accept as our sisters and brothers those who appear different from us. Forgive us, Lord. When we separate ourselves from others with barriers, our insensitivity, our failure to listen or neglect to offer support or to invite people to be part of your church, forgive us, Lord. Create in us a clean heart and renew a healthy spirit within us. Family of God, Christ has not come to bind our mistakes and sins on us, but to loose the bonds and give us liberty. In his name, I declare the forgiveness of sins and the life that is eternal. If Christ sets you free, then you are free indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Uh, during this time, while we are still in the midst of COVID, we're just waving at each other, so there's no need to get up or shake hands. Unless there's somebody within your household, you're welcome to, to greet them in a more personal way. I invite you now to rise as you are able as we sing We Are His Hand. Or, yeah, We Are His Hand, led by the first English band.
Today's reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Originally, Pentecost was a Jewish Thanksgiving type festival celebrated seven weeks after Passover. On this particular Pentecost, however, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the entire community of believers, just as Jesus had promised and the scriptures has prophesied. Empowered by the Spirit, the entire community bears witness to God's activity in multiple languages. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rushing of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each of them, each one, heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, 
This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven, above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Any young people who are here to come forward if they'd like to have a little chat. Well, like I said about the, the less 
lesson for today. Um, we have to admit, when you look back at those words that Mary Ellen read so beautifully, challenging text so it is, yeah, the whole thing's kind of just weird. I mean, chapter 2 is just weird with that sudden whoosh of wind and tongues of fire? What? Foreign languages being understood without the benefit of Google Translate? I mean, it's a little weird, right? Or shall I say, extraño, sensam, viva. I'm not really the only one who thinks that that whole experience is kind of weird because the people in the story of Acts 2 were also described as bewildered in verse 6, amazed and astounded in verse 7, and amazed and perplexed in verse 12 followed by the crowd asking the great question, what does this mean? What does this mean? Winds? Something that looks like fire? Foreign words being understood? And all of this happening on a day that faithful, faithful people from every nation under heaven were coming together to celebrate God's gift of Torah on the Jewish Pentecost. This was no typical gathering. God was doing a new thing. And what does that mean? Maybe it's a message of, of clarity. After all, in the Genesis story of Babel, the people were trying to be like God, so God confused their language to stop them from being like him. And in this lesson, God wanted them to be understood and to understand without having to translate anything. Being able to communicate brings people together. So maybe this is a message of unity in this gospel. It sounds so bizarre in so many ways, but maybe it's a message that we need to come together more. Since we hear descriptions of lots of different nationalities, maybe one point in the story is that though God, or through God, ethnic barriers are broken down. And we already know that was the plan because Jesus said that in Acts chapter 1. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth includes a very long and difficult to read list of nationalities. It includes ancient Medes and Elamites, people who had actually already been extinguished at that point. It includes people from Cappadocia or Asia or Egypt. All kinds of people would be included, and nobody on this list was considered any better or worse than any other nationality. The Holy Spirit reveals God to all flesh, male and female, young and old, free and could find. Trying to understand what that meant, 2,000 years ago is interesting, but what does that have to do with us today? I mean, really, right now, it's not particularly breezy in this church. I wish it were. It feels a little warm. I don't see any tongues of fire resting on anyone. No offense. Now, I'm assuming you all understand English, so there's no need to translate anything. It's not nearly as dramatic as it was in Acts chapter 2 as it is right here at 39th and Charles. But, but, the Holy Spirit is here. Maybe we just don't need the drama to know that the Holy Spirit is here and the Holy Spirit is powerful. It reveals and fills and overshadows and bestows gifts and guides and sanctifies and inspires and renews. In Acts chapter 2, God catches our attention, but in 2022, God challenges us to remind the world that God continues to be active through God's people. It's on us to include people of various languages and cultures. We can use our words to translate God to individual groups who need to hear it. And certain groups do have different ways of communicating. For instance, I think I would use different words to talk to an eight-year-old than the words I might use to talk to an 80-year-old. How can we best translate God's word so that it can be truly heard by women or men, by hetero or LGBTQIA, by white or people of color, hearing or deaf? 
I just finished a book called Death Utopia by Niall DeMarco, and he describes the struggle of being a deaf kid in school. And let me clarify, not just any school, it's a school for deaf children. Niall had deaf parents and deaf siblings, deaf grandparents, deaf great-grandparents. American Sign Language was his native language, but at school, at a deaf school, he was told that he needed to do all the work to try to communicate with his hearing teachers by reading their lips, which is something that's very hard to do. He said, you maybe catch 30%. Can you imagine going to school and catching 30% of what the teachers tell you to? He was forced to wear hearing aids that hurt his ears, that he didn't like. Niall wanted to learn through his native language, through ASL. There have been, been times when schools completely banned ASL. It wasn't allowed at all. Just as some schools banned indigenous languages of Native Americans. It's just so hard to change minds. Niall's mother, as I said, who was also deaf, saw her son struggling and she volunteered to help out in her children's classes since not all of the deaf kids who knew, uh, knew adults who had ASL fluency. Some of them had hearing parents, even if they could sign. So Niall and his brothers were so excited to have their mom come to the class and use ASL and share books with them and with all of the other students. And the kids were so excited to see that the words came alive and they could understand them instead of trying to read the lips and only catching part of the story. They could finally understand they could finally learn. They finally had somebody who was speaking to them in a way they could hear, metaphorically. That experience is very similar to what happened in the Pentecost story, where people could suddenly understand in that language that was familiar to them. And language is only part of the way we can try to include people in God's vision. We can also answer God's call to bring together different people, different cultures and nationalities in acceptance and understanding. And we need some work in this as a church. We aren't always known as the most non-judgmental, accepting place. The Korean group, BTS, spoke out against anti-Asian bases this past week at the White House. The shooting at the Buffalo Tops grocery store two weeks ago and the shooting at Mother Emanuel Church in 2015 were both born of hatred of African Americans. Pride Month is now in June and it's a response to discrimination against the queer community. What if we understood this Pentecost message that God's call to be witnesses to the ends of the earth was a call to confront bias against people of color? and people with different sexual orientations. What if Pentecost reminds us to build bridges and welcome even to people who are different than us? There doesn't have to be a whoosh of a mighty wind or a cacophony of languages being translated because the Holy Spirit is here to lead us and guide us in the way that we have just a glimpse of in this lesson. And the Holy Spirit is here and has gifted us to waft grace in God's world, to speak in ways that can be heard, or perhaps to sign in ways that can be heard, to reach out to others. And we know the Holy Spirit is here because we have invoked that Spirit to come be with us as we worship, and we know that that Holy Spirit is the only way in our car could be given the gifts of the Spirit and be adopted into God's family through the promises of baptism. Oh, yes. The Holy Spirit is here. And the Holy Spirit provokes us to do loving acts and good deeds, to bring healing, inclusion, restoration to God's kingdom. Let's look for ways to speak, to welcome, to love. Amen. In your bulletin are a couple of things to think about. This could be later on in the day, perhaps. Um, just a couple of uh, questions that are found on page 7. 
Number one, there is a rich appreciation of various languages in this text. What benefit is it to talk with someone in a language they can understand instead of making them understand yours? And number two, reflect on Joel's words, the prophet Joel at the end there, that God's spirit will be poured out on all flesh, resulting in prophecy, visions, and dreams. Just think about it. At some point in the day, close your eyes and take a deep breath while you ask the Holy Spirit to blow into your heart. How can your life reflect the Holy Spirit? Things to think about. And now, as we are about to get to, really, I'm sorry, it's a highlight of worship. I know there's communion, but I'm so excited for this baptism. Um, So we are about to have the baptismal song. During this song, um, usually we ask you to stand, but you're welcome to remain seated as we ask all of the baptismal participants, including all of the children here, please join me at the baptismal font in the center as we sing the first verse of Here I Am, Lord.
reject sin and confess the faith of the church? Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, please respond, we renounce them. We renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in the earth. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, from the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took the light. And in the left. Can you come over here? It's already important that I want you to swish around the water. Just like for God you do that. Perfect. Make lots of sound. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Did you stir it up? Awesome. <laughs> That's what God would do. You did God. Okay, and all right. Girl, we're more up.
Guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministers of the gospel. Bless our partnerships in ministry. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be with those responding to this ongoing COVID pandemic and be present in places dealing with unrest and conflict. Fill us in you with your Holy Spirit. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless Baltimore and our online mission field. For our leaders, Joe, Larry, and Brandon, and our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, for those who seek healing through the 12-step programs usually offered in our coffee house, for our prayer bar for First Lutheran Church in Ewan, Michigan, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather your people across regions and nations and lands, and by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Due to the ongoing pandemic, our time of offering does not involve passing a plate, but you are welcome, as, as it describes in your bulletin, to make a donation to the church. If you prefer, you can text a, a donation, go to our website, go to the Give button. Um, if you did bring something, there is a box in the back for receiving donations or simply mail something to the church. And now we offer our prayer of offering. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign. And you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we continue with our communion prayer. You are indeed holy, Father and Mother God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. And as we pray the Lord's Prayer together, pay close attention. We are going to be reading each verse together, the part in bold print, and then you have an option at the same time to read either the Spanish line, the German line, or the French line. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, wie im Himmel so auf Erden. Give us today our daily bread. Unser tägliches Brot, gib uns heute. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Und vergib uns unsere Schuld, wie auch wir vergeben unsere Schuld. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlöse uns von den Bösen. And together, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ invites all of us to this holy feast, and all are welcome. You don't have to be a member of this congregation. You don't have to be Lutheran. The gifts of God are free. The risen Christ dwells here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Thank you. 
too, there are empty cups and they will be filled with wine. If you prefer grape juice, those are the pre-filled cups. If you require a gluten-free wafer, just ask your server.
Let us pray now the prayer after communion, found on page 17. We pray this one all together. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup, we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, in your bulletin, there should be a list of announcements. And in those announcements um, is some information about the baptismal reception at the Carl's home. Uh, everybody is welcome. So good luck with that, Amy and Kelly. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have coffee after church and give them a chance to get going. And Dave Bogart, being ever the one who is prepared, has photocopy directions. It's not that far. It's pretty easy to find, but um, it's nice to be invited. Thank you for that. We are so delighted to have a new sibling in Christ, and we're also delighted to recognize the graduates. We know several have graduated this year, and so next year especially, we're having a coffee hour to honor them. We also have some Bibles, and we're going to ask people to highlight or write a note in the Bible so that they can take it with them on their way to college or wherever. So you can, um, if you have time after today's service, I guess you're welcome to write something, but this will be next week is the time we're actually recognizing the graduates. So you might even be wanting to think about, like, well, what is their favorite verse? What would I want to recommend? So be thinking about that, or you might do that today as we are um, having a little bit of coffee after church. There are some interest polls. I just want to call that to your attention. We have a possible potluck supper in Oktoberfest. We just want to make sure people are interested. We're trying to come back in some ways, things that we could not do for several years because of the uh, pandemic. So we just want to see who's actually interested in some of these things. Um, Pastor Ed Wetstone will be here next week. And he's a very familiar face here. He's so delighted to be coming back. Um, he and Vicki will be here, his wife, so um, that's wonderful. There's information also about Vacation Bible School. Um, during the summer, we have special programs. You see that in your bulletin. We, um, pretty much, we want, we want summer worship to be a little more fun. So um, we have a few things coming up. I just want to give you a heads up. Holy Humor Sunday is the 19th. That's also Father's Day, so it's Dad Joke Day, you might say. Uh, so bring, you know, find your jokes, bring them to worship that day. Also on the 26th is Gibson Towns Day, and if you wanted to do anything at all in church, let us know. Either Joanne and me, if you want to play something, sing something, do a dance, like let us know. We would love to let you, give you a forum to share your gifts and talents. So there's other ways, especially more ways you can help. There's some celebrations going on. Um, uh, St. John's Evangelical is having a few church dinners, so just more information to call to your attention. We continue our worship with the blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is Shine, Jesus, Shine, which is on pages 18 and 19. Please rise as you are able as we sing that song.
peace.